Hey, what is going on everybody? It is your boy Hobo here today and today we are back as you can see playing some more Madden NFL 19 but this time it is very special. We are here breaking down the NFC and AFC championship games for the 2018-19 NFL season. It's finally here. It's finally upon us. The conference championship round of the playoffs. It's taken what? 19 weeks to get here I think tw I don't know 19 or 20 and and finally you know not including preseason in the offseason and all that but finally we're here the biggest week of the year besides the big game in February it's finally upon us the four best teams in the National Football League are all taking place and and showing off their craft this weekend we have the number two seeded LA Rams visiting the number one seeded New Orleans Saints at 3.05 p.m. Eastern Time on Fox for the National Football Conference Championship. And this game is going to be a doozy. So the last time these teams met, the, uh, the Saints actually walked away with the win. Uh, that game happened in New Orleans. As many of you will recall, the Saints ended up actually handling the Rams pretty well. 45 to 35 so not exactly a close game and the Rams didn't make it close they struggled badly and uh, but, but the thing about these two teams in this meeting is the Saints offense since they got smacked down by the Dallas Cowboys haven't been the same since Alvin Kamara hasn't looked like the same runner he, he you know he doesn't have quite that same explosiveness he had prior to getting smacked around by the Cowboys and the offense hasn't put up 20 points, I don't think, one time since that game. Uh, obviously, they, they got 20 points last week against Philadelphia, but I don't think they've exceeded 20 since the game against Dallas. While the Rams, uh, finally Jared Goff has come out of his little you know, end of the regular season slump that he was on there for a hot minute, and I'm glad he has come off of that. And, of course, the emergence of C.J. Anderson and Todd Gurley as a amazing duo out of the backfield. C.J. Anderson really was a steal for the Los Angeles Rams. He has completely given them an entirely new dynamic where it, you know, you're not afraid to sub Todd Gurley out and still run your traditional offense because Anderson has proved he can run the ball effectively and he can catch the ball out of the backfield very well. So he's a great dual threat guy to have back there partnered with Todd Gurley. And it, that is, to me, what's going to be the biggest key are the running back groups in this game. You have uh, Mark Ingram and um, excuse me, uh, Alvin Kamara on one side and then Todd Gurley and uh, C.J. Anderson on the other for the Rams. And those two units are going to have to play exceptionally well in order for their teams to win. Obviously, Drew Brees, Jared Goff going to have to play great games because it is championship football, so they're going to have to play championship football. And neither of these guys can afford turnovers. Jared Goff, you know, he's, he's kind of cut back on that these past few weeks. He's had a couple of bad games, and I was really afraid that if the Eagles were to have made it to the NFC Championship, that they would just steamroll the Rams because, you know, that defense, uh, the, the Eagle defense played, I mean, it played okay, you know, in that latter half of the season and into the playoffs. But let's just put this elephant to bed. They should never have even gotten past the Chicago Bears just to start and then obviously handled by the by the Saints. So now we're here in the two thirteen and three teams. And honestly, you know, if the Saints didn't beat the Rams, but the uh well, obviously, as you guys know as football fans, if the Saints didn't beat the Rams, if the Rams beat the Saints, the, the one and two seeds would be flipped in this game we played in L.A. And I think uh, that would really make the difference for the Rams if they were playing in Los Angeles as opposed to going and playing in the Superdome. Because in the Superdome, it's a completely different atmosphere. It gets into guys' heads. It got into Nick Foles' head. It's gotten into countless other quarterbacks, Matt Ryan, Cam Newton, uh these big name quarterbacks get rattled by this environment and i don't think that's anything you know to be to be meddled with especially when you're throwing a young kid in there i'm sure he's already got the experience playing in the superdome does jared goff but now he's playing the nfc championship in the superdome and sure the last time the nfc championship 
was uh well excuse that thought i was thinking something else that i read earlier today and that i didn't even mean to to speak about that was completely off kilter so back on focus um the saints they have a dynamic group on defense now that i'm switching gears over to the other side of the ball and completely ditching whatever i was just thinking about uh we're on to defense now, and the Saints defense, to me, is the better group of the two teams. The Rams defense, uh, on paper, they should be a great unit, but really they're they're not. From all the, the Rams games I've seen, they haven't looked like a great unit. Sure, they've had good games against the 49ers, but, I mean, come on. Anybody's going to have a relatively decent day against the 49ers. I mean, the Giants beat the 49ers, and I don't know what that says. But it, it must say something. But the Rams, uh, their defense not lived up to my expectations for that star-studded cast. And I think Aqib Talib's going to be okay to play in this game. Him, Marcus Peters, your Aaron Donalds, your Ndamukong Suze. Those guys, the big names, the, the people, or the, excuse me, the players who have already played in these situations need to step up. And I know this is a first for Aaron Donald being in a championship game. But he's going to have to step his game up. Ndamukong Sue is going to have to step his game up. Aqib Talib's already got a couple rings. He's got to step it up. Marcus Peters has played in these big games, and he's got to step it up. These guys all have what it takes to win. But when you're going against a quarterback on the other side, the all-time passing leader in the history of the National Football League, it's not an easy task, especially when one of those two corners there is going to have to cover and shadow for the whole game, in my opinion, the best wide receiver in football, Michael Thomas. And that's not an easy task, as the Eagles proved last week when Michael Thomas embarrassed them and pretty much single-handedly won that game for the New Orleans Saints. Obviously, hashtag Alshon dropped it, and that's another key factor why the Eagles lost. Uh, actually, the factor they lost, but... Whatever, I, you know, th this is my video, and I'm able to make my subjective opinions. And, and this game, to me, is going to be so close. I think it's going to be even closer than that 10-point game they had earlier this year. It's, it's just, you know, one of those things where the first team to make a mistake, in my opinion, will lose. Whoever turns the ball over first will lose. Whoever misses a field goal or an extra point first will lose. You know, whoever is out of position on a play, blows a coverage first, we'll lose. Whoever drops a pass first, we'll lose. These kinds of mistakes you don't make in, in championship football, especially with these two teams, with the two high-scoring offenses and the two uh, you know, really good to great defenses, this game is either going to be really high-scoring or you know, moderately high-scoring but very tight. And uh, th This game, to me, I've been saying it all week, ever since the divisional round, I don't care who comes out of the NFC as long as the Patriots don't make it to the Super Bowl, but it's time now I've got to make a pick, and this is so tough, but uh, I'm really going to have to pick the uh, the Los Angeles Rams. You know, I just, I've just i believed in them since day one, and I especially after that game, you know, they played against Kansas City, but then when you look at their 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 games they've played this year when they lost to the Saints obviously and they lost to uh, Chicago and I mean they're, they're two great teams right there and Chicago should have made it farther than they did but lo and behold it was not to be so the, I'm going to take the Rams in this game I think they're going to learn from their mistakes and I think the Saints are going to get caught a little bit off guard just by uh, the adjustments the Saint, or the Rams excuse me, are going to make in this game and I don't know what exactly the Rams can do to win this game differently than the game plan they tried to execute last time. But obviously, I don't get paid the millions of dollars that, you know, Sean McVay and all those guys get paid to make those kinds of decisions and, and all that nonsense. So I'm going to leave that up to them. But I, I'm going to pick the LA Rams in this game. I, just, I, I like them. I like them a lot. And I just like them slightly more in this game than the New Orleans Saints. So next up, 6.40 p.m., Eastern Time on CBS. It's the number two seeded New England Patriots versus in Kansas City, the number one seeded Kansas City Chiefs. So this game is going to be very, very interesting because it's going to be in the intense cold. It is going to be absolutely frigid. However, these two teams have already met. Let's not forget in Foxborough earlier this year, 
on October the 14th. The Patriots came away from that game with a three-point victory, and that game came down to one simple coaching mistake by Andy Reid, in my humble opinion. The Kansas City Chiefs left Tom Brady three minutes and some odd change to go down and kick a game-winning field goal tied 40-40. to And you do not give Tom Brady three minutes to go down and score on your offense or on your defense because it's just going to happen. It is. It, it, I mean, it didn't happen in the Super Bowl last year, and it didn't happen against two Super Bowls. Uh, he played against the Giants, but it just happens. The Patriots just find a way to be better than you, and you cannot let that happen. You cannot give them easy opportunities to be better than you. And the Kansas City Chiefs are really, really, really going to need to make sure they don't make those kinds of mistakes. And I said that with the NFC Championship game. This is a game of playing mistake-free football, and the Patriots do not make mistakes. But the Kansas City Chiefs, on the other hand, they're more of a free, uh, 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 you know, a, a free... What am I trying to say? They're just a free offense and a free team. They like to play loose. They play fast. They play aggressive. They play hard. And they're a team that you really just can't discount because of the fact they have a young quarterback. And I know that the margin of, of age between Brady and Mahomes is actually a length of time that is older than me, which is incredible. But that to me doesn't matter. I'm not going to take into account that Brady's a five-time Super Bowl champion and this past year was Patrick Mahomes' first full regular season. You know, he played that one game at the end of last year's regular season, but this year was his first full season and I'm not going to hold that against him. I think that that works in his favor, actually. The Belichick doesn't have a lot of tape to go off of and that is going to be a critical factor for the Kansas City Chiefs is how much do they want to change their offense to more suit Patrick Mahomes and try to kind of keep the Patriots guessing because the Patriots are always going to cr create these crazy defensive schemes to, to throw your young guys off and the, and then on the other side of the ball their offense and the snake guy, uh, what's his face there, Josh McDaniels, he always seems to find a way to create, you know, these really fancy looking trick plays, reverse plays, end arounds, and, you know, jet sweeps, and halfback passes, and fullback passes, and Philly specials, and all this nonsense, and they, they think of creative ways to move the ball, and that's not a detriment to them, that's a, that's a plus, obviously, but the Kansas City Chiefs are going to have to be able to reel that in. And Andy Reid's going to have to do a much better job coaching this game than he did in October. Because if you give Tom Brady you know, a chance to score at the end of the half and a chance to score at the end of the game, you're going to lose. And that's just, to me, the, the simplistics of playing the New England Patriots. Because if the Patriots win the toss, they're going to defer. Immediately they're going to defer. They're going to give your offense a chance and they're going to try to shut down your young quarterback. And if they can do that, and if they can have the, the, the final possession of the half, if they can have the final possession of the game, to me, they win. And it's, it's going to come down to, can the Patriots offense put up as many points as the Chiefs? Because I don't think that the Patriots defense is good enough to, to contain Patrick Mahomes in this high-flying offense. Because let's think of it this way. You've got Damian Williams, who's running the football very well for the Kansas City Chiefs. Then you've got Tyreek Hill, and you've got Sammy Watkins, and you've got Travis Kelsey that you need to account for on every single play. If you double one of those guys, it's going to leave one or, or two or three other guys wide open for a great young quarterback to throw to. And that is very, very, very crucial for the Chiefs. They need to get Mahomes enough time to not have to scramble around and make all these these circus throws because eventually those circus throws especially against a team like the Patriots who are so keen on capitalizing mistakes a team like that is going to take an Aaron throw from an you know a, a Patrick Mahomes who's done a spin out roll around off his back foot 360 with his left hand they're going to take that and they're going to turn it into a, a, a turnover and that's why the Patriots are so good because they will turn your best into your worst and the Chiefs have they've got a real end they got to dial it back and they've got to have a sound game plan that they know can work because this Patriots team last week against the Chargers 
literally did nothing other than run the ball on the screen. Uh, excuse me, and, and just throw it, you know, to whoever in, in the flat, the running back in the flat. And that absolutely murdered the zone defense that the Chargers were playing last week. They didn't play a lick of man defense, and they got destroyed. They gave up big plays to Gronk. They gave up big plays to Julian Edelman. They, I, I almost said Danny Amendola, but he plays Miami now. Poor, poor guy. But um, the Chiefs, they've got to be able, you know, to contain that and then create their own way to move the ball. And if they can move the ball effectively, I have faith in the chief defense that they can hold the Patriots, you know, on cuz all you need to do is if you score on every possession if you're the Chiefs, make sure the Patriots don't score on one of them and you will win. All that matters in the game of football is coming away with more points than your opponent has. And if they can do that, <laughs> then obviously they win. That's like one of those John Madden memes. All you got to do to beat your opponent is score more points than them. You know, on offense, you've only got two options. Run the ball or, or throw the ball. Like, yeah, duh. But this game is close to me. It will be close. It will be another 27-20 to 20 like they had in 2016. Another 43-40 to 40 like they had earlier th uh, this year. And it's, it's going to be close, but I have to give it to the Chiefs. You know, I'm not on board with those dumb reporter guys who call themselves analysts and get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars of money to sit around and say, like Colin Coward, the Chiefs fans are going to be too cold to make a lot of noise. What? If that ain't the stupidest thing I ever heard in my life, then I don't know what is. What do you mean the cold is going to prevent the fans from being loud? They're there to watch their team host their first ever AFC Championship game. Of course they're going to be loud, you fool. Why wouldn't they be? And it's against the Patriots, who already beat your asses earlier this year. They're going to be loud. They're going to be there. And no matter if the Chiefs are down 40 or if they're up 40, they're going to make the same amount of noise. They're going to be there. And I think that they're going to be able to play a small impact on this game and just kind of throw off Tom Brady. I don't know if he's quite expecting this this noise that he's going to hear in Kansas City. Because the last time they played in Kansas City, September 7th of 2017. Wait, no, I'm wrong. That was in Foxborough. And that was 42 to 27, I think. I don't know. I'm looking at the, the last three matchups. I don't remember which one was in Kansas City. But I remember that game in 2013 or 14 when Brady went to Kansas City and they got spanked. They got absolutely spanked. The people were calling for the end of the Patriots right then and there. Tom Brady has, in recent memory, not played great in Kansas City. No matter the cold, the heat, the, the piss-poor weather, the, the snow, the rain, the sleet, the hail, the whatever you throw at him, he just hasn't seemed to play well in Kansas City. And I'm going to give this game to the Chiefs because I think, in my heart of hearts, that they will have the, the, the Patriots number. I think they'll have the Patriots number in this game specifically. In this game, and that's all you need. You know, like the NFL's been promoting, it's not a best of seven, it's a best of one. And the Chiefs just have to be great for this one game, and they'll go to the Super Bowl. And that's my pick. So my picks are the LA Rams, the Kansas City Chiefs, and we're going to have another 51-49 to shootout like we did earlier this year and it's going to be fantastic in the Super Bowl highest scoring Super Bowl of all time mark my friggin words actually don't do that because I hate being wrong on the other hand that's going to do it guys so my official predictions will send the LA Rams and the Kansas City Chiefs to Super Bowl 53 in what should be a barn burner but obviously I'm probably going to be wrong and it'll end up being the Patriots and the Saints so I hope that you guys enjoyed this especially long review of the uh, NFL Conference Championship round here on Saturday, January 19th, 2019. This video obviously won't be going up until Sunday, but it'll be early, early enough to where you guys won't really care. So that's going to do it for me, guys. I hope that you enjoy some football tomorrow. Please, no matter who you're pulling for in these games, just pull for a great game. Have fun. Stay safe. If you live in the Northeast, please... Stay away from this snow. Don't try to drive in it. You'll end up getting wrecked. Um, it, it's it's a it's a bad scene out there right now. So uh, everybody in the Northeast getting affected by these snowstorms, please stay safe. Stay in your homes. Just watch some football. Eat some chili, and if you have to, drink out of the toilet. But everybody else, please make sure to have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Cheer on whoever the hell you want to cheer on. 
And uh, if your team doesn't win that you're rooting for, then don't complain about it on social media, or else I will roast your ass. So that's going to do it for me, guys. Your boy Hobo, we've eclipsed the 20-minute mark, so I am out of here. And I will catch you guys next week to break down the Pro Bowl. That's going to do it for me, your boy Hobo. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.